This is Rome, the so-called eternal city, where the historic Tiber peacefully winds its way, and the glory of yesterday forms a supporting background to the somewhat bewildering confusion of today. Rome itself contains enough treasures of art and history to occupy our time indefinitely, but we will content ourselves with only a few highlights, beginning with the Tiber River, which is perhaps the oldest moving thing in all of Italy. In the course of its meandering through the city, the Tiber flows under many historic bridges, not the least of which is the Ponte San Angelo, with its ten statues of angels, leading to the castle of San Angelo, a Roman citadel since the 10th century. Here in the Piazza Venezia stands the monument to Victor Emmanuel II, where also is buried Italy's unknown soldier of the First World War. The Roman Forum was the heart of the mighty empire of the Caesars, as well as the source of an unrivaled system of jurisprudence, which has become the model of every modern nation. Even in ruins, the form of the ancient Romans is a fitting symbol of the glory that was Rome. In 312 AD, the Emperor Constantine was converted to Christianity, and that notable event was commemorated by this triumphal arch. The most colossal of all the Roman ruins is the great amphitheater, also known as the Colosseum, built 19 centuries ago by Jewish prisoners who were taken at the fall of Jerusalem during the reign of the emperor, Vespasian. In strange contrast to the Colosseum, where Christians were once thrown to roaring lions for the amusement of pagan Rome, is this world-renowned institution known as St. Peter's, where a Christian pope now holds spiritual dominion over all of Roman Catholic Christendom. The buildings on the right form the Vatican in which the pope resides. Traveling over the road from Rome to Assisi, we pass through fertile valleys that are filled with the fragrances of spring. And along the road, we are particularly impressed by the famous white oxen of Tuscany, a special breed that flourishes in this part of Italy. Draft cattle of Tuscany are remarkable for their size, strength, and docility. They are much preferred to horses as farm animals, for when they have served their usefulness on the highways and in the fields, they may furnish roasts for the peasant's table. For centuries, the Italian farmers have planted the soil as they do today. And although more modern methods are being introduced, the transition does not appear to be very popular. And now we behold the picturesque old town of Assisi, made famous by a young man who came to be known as St. Francis of Assisi, founder of the Franciscan order. His mortal remains lie buried beneath this church, to which come devout pilgrims from all parts of the Roman Catholic world. Some historians claim that the life of St. Francis of Assisi came nearer to that of Jesus than any other Christian disciple. The town of Assisi itself is steeped in the memory of St. Francis, who was born here in 1182, the son of a rich merchant. Centuries before St. Francis, however, Assisi was a wealthy and important Roman colony. As in all the older towns of rural Italy, the public fountain is a popular meeting place where the gossip of the village is rampant. And all who do not show up are apt to be shown up. The shops of Assisi sell the homely wares of the countryside, and they naturally feature religious mementos of every kind and description. Devout pilgrims journey here from all parts of Europe. This one seems to be having a little difficulty with his camera. En route to the town of Pisa, we are fascinated again by the rustic beauty of the country. In the hills of Tuscany, the farmers plant trees in their fields to serve as living supports for grapevines. Above all, Tuscany is known for its vineyards, and the cultivation is done partly by the old-fashioned method of festooning the vines from tree to tree in this manner. 
The famous Chianti wine derives its name from this district. And now we come to one of the seven wonders of the world, the Leaning Tower of Pisa. This famous freak of architecture was begun in 1173 AD and completed in 1350. It commenced to lean during construction, owing to clay in the soil, which gradually gave way on one side until it was 16 feet out of perpendicular. It is still sinking at a very slow rate. Galileo dropped objects from its leaning side and so evolved the law of the velocity of falling bodies. Vying with the Tower of Pisa is a famous landmark known as the Cathedral of Florence, dating back to the early part of the 15th century. The baptistry of this renowned cathedral is noted for its famous bronze doors, which Michelangelo declared to be fit for the gates of paradise. Each panel represents an event in the Old Testament. Ghiberti occupied himself for 27 years in the modeling of these doors, and for five centuries they have been a source of inspiration to generations of successive artists. Spanning the River Arno is the Ponte Vecchio, the oldest bridge in Florence, and it still provides safe passage for the city's traffic, although its ramparts were bombed during World War II. Under the cover of this old bridge once passed such illustrious immortals as Dante, Galileo, Petrarch, Cellini, Michelangelo, and countless other men of genius. And so goes the pageantry of Italy's immortal landmarks, which have been a source of inspiration to countless generations and continue to be a tribute to the creative genius of her famous artists whose names have emblazoned the pages of history.